So you've just fabricated your best performing solar cell and now you want to know everything about the charge carrier dynamics when how they recombine, the trapping rate and so on. Transit photoluminescence measurements contain all the information you need in just a single curve. You just need to extract it. Transient photoluminescence, also called time-resolved photoluminescence, is a measurement technique used to determine the recombination dynamics in a light-absorbing material. Shining a short laser pulse generates charged carriers. The carriers that recombine radiatively cause the emission of photons from the sample, and photoluminescence can be measured until recombination ceases. To extract information, you can fit the TRPL decay with a bi-exponential equation, which gives you two lifetime values for the charged carriers, the radiative and the non-radiative lifetimes. Great, right? But you're not quite finished. Lifetime values depend on many other parameters that influence each other as well. There's illumination conditions, recombination coefficients, doping of the absorber material, charge extraction, carry mobilities, trap density. It is actually difficult to say with certainty. However, there, there is help at hand. 1D drift diffusion simulations can help you. The equations defining the drift diffusion can describe the movement of the charges in the solar cell after the photo excitation. Exactly what you need to understand the dynamics of the charges in your sample and interpret the TRPL. Here at Fluxim, we analyze what influences the TRPL decay of a perovskite layer with Cephos, a 1D drift diffusion simulation software which includes mobile ions and a user-friendly interface. Broadly speaking, the shape of the TRPL decay depends on the radiative and non-radiative recombination rates of the photogenerated charge carriers. By sweeping the illumination intensity, we vary the amount of photogenerated charge carriers, which influences the initial curvature of the decay. In fact, the radiative recombination has a quadratic dependence with the density of the photogenerated charge carriers. If instead we sweep the capture and emission rates of the charges, we see a change in the tail of the TRPL decay, because we are varying the non-radiative recombination rate, which affects predominantly the slope of the long tail and has a linear dependence with the photogenerated charges. So how to set the right properties and illumination conditions? It is actually not that straightforward, and it might require some guessing. But after a lot of testing, we want to share a fitting routine that we believe is instrumental for setting a reliable and realistic TRPL simulation. It starts by setting the electrical properties of the light absorbing material. Then you choose a range of values within literature for the radiative recombination coefficient. It is difficult to precisely quantify it, so you should test the simulation with multiple radiative recombination coefficients. At this point, you should sweep the illumination intensity. The goal here is to find the intensity that reflects the experimental conditions and gives you a good fit for the initial curvature of the decay. Eventually, you can fine-tune the electrical properties set at the beginning to fit the long tail of the decay. How do we know that it works? I'm going to show you. For a good fit between simulated and experimental TLPR, we first set reasonable electrical parameters. The radiative recombination coefficient for perovskite is within 10 to the minus 10, so we chose to the lowest and the highest extremes of such range. The results after the illumination sweep are clear. The highest radiative recombination coefficient is the right one, and the simulated curve fits the experimental one for a light intensity within the experimental range. The long tail will fit after minor adjustments of the electrical properties. Perovskite solar cells keep improving with researchers developing higher efficiency cells at an impressive rate, but the performance could be higher. The mobile ions present in the perovskite film causes charge collection losses, which limit the maximum achievable current. This finding comes from a recent discovery from the groups of Martin Stoddelford and Henry Snaith. Perovskites have anions which are mobile. When the voltage varies, the anions will redistribute and negatively affect the built-in potential of the solar cell device. We use Setfos to analyze the influence of mobile anions on electrical performance of a state-of-the-art perovskite solar cell based on this composition. By performing voltage scans in both the forward and reverse direction at an increasing scan rate, you can assess the presence and impact of mobile ions. Anions have a mobility that is up to a billion times smaller than electrons, 
or host mobility, therefore hysteresis effects occurs at low scan rates. In such case, the ions have time to redistribute within the perovskite film. Faster voltage rates, the ions are immobile and do not influence the built-in potential, so the hysteresis cannot be observed. The current loss is revealed by the analysis of the current decay. Here, the voltage switches from open circuit voltage to zero volts, with a sample under continuous illumination. As you can see, the current density drops over time until it stabilizes after about 5 seconds. To better understand the origin of the collection losses, it is helpful to analyze the evolution of the charge distribution and electric field within the perovskite layer. The charge collection losses are caused by an accumulation of electronic charge in the active layer due to a reduction in the charge extraction efficiency over the first few seconds of operation, because the mobile ions redistribute the internal field. This conclusion is further supported by the transient measurements like BACE and CLIF, which we will discuss in another episode of Fluxin Science Shorts. Thanks for watching.